All right, so today we're going to look at our last word problem section. This, this is it, okay? Systems, okay? The nice thing about this section is you can use the same formula, which we're going to go through in a second, for every problem, okay? The formula that you need to know, we just reviewed a little, okay? It involves D, R, and T. W what was that formula? We just went over it. Distance equals rate times time. Okay, should be pretty straightforward what they all stand for. Okay, D is your what? Distance. Distance. R is your rate. rate or your speed, how fast, and T? Time. Time. Come on, cheese. You guys, you got something like that on your um, sheet. It looks like that. So you just put in the letters, and then you have the arrows, and just fill in under the arrows what each thing means. All you, what you're filling is, is the D equals RT, and then the arrows, and then well, you already have the arrows there, and you're writing in what each thing means. So as we, um, as we go through the word problem, okay, you might get at something that says, Joe traveled 33 miles. Okay, we have to know what is that? Is that his time? Is that his distance? Is that his speed? So what's a, what's a key word that you would see that would, something would be measured in distance? Yeah, someone said it? Miles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is Mr. Ray there anything else? Do we measure anything in feet? No, I think everything, I think everything we're doing today and tomorrow is just in miles. Miles. Cool. Okay. What about speed? Think of, your, think of your car, you look at the speedometer, well, there's two speeds, but miles the one that we hour. use in the U.S. Miles per hour. Miles per hour, okay. Other countries, they use kilometers per hour. I don't think we have any problems with that. It's all miles per hour. It's just different measurements. So, guys, might, that, as far as how it's abbreviated, it might be a different way. It might be MI, might be MI slash HR or MPH. Those both mean the same thing. There's, there's some on the... In the, on the examples today, that I have written the first way, MI slash HR, and then the stuff on the homework or on the quiz tomorrow might be MPH. They both mean the same thing. Question, Isaiah? Uh, okay. Now, what about time? Minutes, hours. I heard minutes. Seconds. I heard hours. Okay, both are correct. Yeah. Now, if you have a problem, and let's say they give you a speed in miles per hour, and then they decide to be tricky and give you a time in minutes, well, you've got to use the same thing in the problem. Either you do everything in hours, or you do everything in minutes, but you can't mix the two. Okay, any question on yeah, that? Yeah, I think, I think the most of them, I mean, there might be one example today, guys, where you have to go from like minutes to like convert it, but most times it's going to be hours and hours, not to convert the end. If you do have to convert it, we're going to use a calculator, and it involves 60. Either divide by 60 or multiply by 60, because that's how many minutes are in an hour. Okay? But that's the only thing you'd have to convert, minutes, minutes to hours or hours to minutes. Okay, any question on those? All right. So this kind of problem, since we're going to use the same equation, for every single problem. A table to set everything up is going to be very helpful. Okay. What you're going to be putting in the two boxes on the left could be two people, like Bob and Sue. Okay. Could be two trains. Train one left at 9 o'clock. Train two left at 12 o'clock. Um, it could be uh, a car left from here and a motorcycle left from here. So it could be car, motorcycle. Whatever it is, it's going to be the two things that are traveling. People, cars, planes. It, it, might, it, it, could be, it might even be the same thing. It might be the same like a plane, and it's going like on its. Like we're going to talk a little bit about like wind speed and stuff like that. It's going like it might be plane with the wind, and then plane going against the wind. It might be raft going with the current, raft going against the current. All right. So it might, it might be the same thing too. Yep. Yep. That's good. So we'll, we'll talk about that. That, that example, it, it's a little more complicated. There is one on the test like that. But the basic idea is if you think you're traveling with the wind, it's helping you. 
If you travel with the wind, or say you're on a boat traveling with the current, it's going to push you along. If you're traveling against the current, if you're fighting it, what's that going to do to you? Slow you down. It's going to slow you down. All right. So one case you speed you up, one case it slows you down. That's the basic idea. All right. The columns stand for your distance, your rate, and your time. Now, when you set this up, I would expect to see a couple letters. Okay? Generally, there's going to be two things we don't know. Okay? But we're going to set up a system, and we'll use substitution, and I'll show you how that works. Any question on the table? Okay. All right, so you guys should already have this written down. It's all typed out on it for you. So you don't have to copy it over. It's example one on the bottom of the first page, on side. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to read through it. I'm going to try to figure out what I know. I'm going to try to figure out what I don't know. Okay. This one says a train left Pennsylvania Station traveling 35 miles an hour. Okay. It says two hours later, a high-speed train left traveling at 55 miles an hour. I want to know how long it's going to take for the train that left two hours later to catch up. Okay. Let's try to just figure out the two things here, okay, what we could call them. If they're people, car one, car two, things like that. Okay. What do you think we could call our two things here that are traveling? Sure, train one, train two. Okay, so fill that in. Train one. Train two. So we're going to call this one the first train that left. Let's call it train one. Okay. Two hours later, the high-speed train, we'll call that train two. Do I know anything about train one? Okay, I know that its speed is 35. Right? Do I know anything about the high-speed train, train two? Okay, we know a couple things. It left two hours later, and somebody else said another number. That's its speed. Yeah. Guys, remember, like we, did, like we did at the beginning, right? Those keywords for distance, rate, time, right? Rate is miles an hour. That's why we know it goes in that call, or in that row. The trains are going to meet up. Okay, at some point, the slower, the faster train is going to catch up, and then they're going to meet. Okay. How far will each of the trains, tra or what will be true when the two trains finally meet up? If you were to measure the distance each one of them traveled, what would happen? Think about once the trains meet up and they're together, they'll each have traveled how much? They'll each have traveled the same distance. Okay. Right, one of them's going faster, that's how it can catch up. So anytime you see a problem that says, when will things meet? That means basically, when will they have traveled the same distance? When will they have caught up to each other? We don't know what that distance is going to be. All we know is, however far train one travels, that's how far train two is going to travel. When they meet, they'll both be the same distance away from where they started. Now we have to figure out the times, and we have a fact we can use. What did you put in box D? Uh, just a D. I don't, I don't know the distance. So, so like Mr. Hagel was just explaining, he said that we don't know how far they're going, but we know they're going the same distance. Yeah. One's not going far, when they meet up, they'll have gone the same, they've gone the same amount of miles. Right. Right? Kind of thing like if, we, if I said, you know, let's, let's meet up in uh, Lemonster. You might drive 50, I might drive 60. It doesn't matter how fast we drove, we're each going to drive the same distance. We're going to meet together, drive the same distance. Yeah? Do you know the distance would be 35 times 2? 35 times? Because it's two hours before the high school. Well, yeah, let's look at the two hours and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. Which train left first? Train 1. Train 1. Do we know how long it's going to take for the two trains to meet? No. No, that's the question. How long is it going to take for them to be? Okay. Let's, 
Let's represent the time train one travels as t. We don't, we don't know what it is. Okay? And in these kind of problems, you should see two letters in every row that you do. Now, think about train two. What does it say? Two hours later. So if train one traveled six hours, how much would train two have traveled if it left two hours later? Oh, no. All right, if you've, let's say, no, it's faster. let's say I've been driving for six hours and you meet up with me and you leave two hours later, how long did you have to drive to catch up to me? Same amount. Four. Same amount. Four hours. Four hours. Okay. Let's Five say, here's another one. Let's say I left, took me five hours to get somewhere. You left two, two hours and later and than me and you caught up to me. Two and a half hours. I left five hours. Three. Three. Okay, let's try another one. It took me 10 hours to get to, to, get to um, Maine. You left two hours later than me and you got to Maine. How long did it take you? Eight. 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 All right. So whatever, whatever my time is, subtract two from me. OK? It's like, like last week we did like, uh, last academic we did the age problem, right? Two years older than, we did minus two. If it was younger than, then we added two. That's what we're going to subtract two. All right, so there's our, there's our table. That's the hard part. From here, it's going to be easy, okay. as long as we remember the equation with the D, the R, and the T. What's that equation again? T equals R times T. T equals RT. Okay. Now what I want you to do, for each row, plug in the three things that we put in that row into that equation. Okay. So I'll start you off with row one. Let's see if you guys can do row two. What's the distance in row one? D. What's the speed in row one? 35. What's the time in row one? I think someone said it. T. Yeah. There's your first equation. D equals 35T. Now go through the second one. Okay, D. D equals 55. And now, because this has something added or subtracted, what do we always want to do when we have something like that? Put it, you have two terms. put it in parentheses. D equals R. What goes, what's my time in row two? T minus two. T minus two. Those are our two equations. Once you get your table set up, you don't even need to think about the formula. It's D equals RT every time. Okay. Questions on that? All right. What variable is already by itself? D. Okay. In the equation one, it says D equals what? 35 times T. D is equal to 35T. Do we have a D anywhere in the second equation? Yeah. And we're going to take that, and we're going to put it in for D. You guys remember doing that with substitution? It's exactly like we've done before. Do I change the right-hand side at all? No. Nope. We'll Keep that. Distribute. Yeah, good. We will distribute. That's good. Now, on the left-hand side, what are you changing D to? 35. 35 what? 35 T. 35 T. Yeah, that one's just a little bit strange because D was by itself in both of them, so you're just plugging them into each other. Okay, Isaiah, what did you say the next thing was to do here? Distribute. Distribute. So we got 55 times T. How do we write that? 55 T. Minus 110. Minus 110. Good. Bringing the A game today, huh? All right, what's my next step? You can tell me, actually, two, two steps and then we're done. Yeah. So we, since we've got all the numbers without t's on the right, I'd put all the numbers with t's on the left. Yeah. Subtract 55t and 55t. What's 35 minus 55? 
Yep, it's supposed to be negative. That's, that's perfect. And now I'm going to divide. Someone else tell me, what do I divide by? Negative 20. Good. Now, notice what's going to happen here. 20s are gone, negatives are gone. Anything else gone on the right? Negative divided by negative? Those are gone. Because it's oh. a negative one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A negative divided by a negative is always a positive. Yep. But it's plus two on the other one. On the other side, 35 minus 55, that's a negative. Back up to the other problem. What the hell? Yep. That's, that's minus two. That's minus two. That's a minus two. Minus two. Oh, yeah. If it was, kidding. I wrote it wrong. If it was plus two, that, that would have messed us up. Now our last step is divided up. So 5.5, what's my label? This is time. Uh, hours. hours. So T is 5.5 hours. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go back up and see what, what did they ask me? Did they ask me how long has train one been traveling? No, or how long is or how long has train two been traveling? That's two different questions, because one of them was two hours shorter than the other. Okay, so now we know train one. T was how much? T was 5.5. Okay, it says in how many hours after the slower train starts will the two trains meet? So basically it's saying once the slow train um, yeah, so how long, would, how long has the fast train been going for? So train one is 5.5. How about train two? You just double uh, <coughs> plus two. Oh, no, you do 5.5 minus two. So this one's only been traveling? 3.5. 3.5. So train one was traveling for five and a half hours. Train two, since it's going faster, it caught up in three and a half hours. Okay, the question says, how many hours after the slower train starts will the two trains meet? That's five and a half hours, because the slow train left first. Okay. Guys, any questions on that? Yeah? Fill that water bottle. Yeah. Please. Right now? Any, okay. any questions? Okay, that's, that's the basic idea of a distance rate time problem. Okay? Okay, the tricky, tricky thing about this, and they didn't, they didn't try to be too tricky here, but if they said to you, how long has the high-speed train been traveling before they met up? How long did the high-speed train travel for? Guys, train two. Right. If they said, how long did the high-speed train travel for before they met? That's 3.5. This one asked, how long did the slow train travel for before they met? So 5.5 hours. Okay, so let's try um, let's try another one. Okay, you guys get this one on your sheet too. Come on. Okay, so it says let's just read through it. On a bike ride, Jim rode his bike at five miles an hour. Barry followed him, leaving from the same spot an hour later. This is feeling a lot like the last one. Somebody else is going to leave later. They're going to travel faster, and they're going to catch up. They're going to meet. So this is the same. Same type. Okay, so what's it say? Barry followed Jim. He left an hour later. He rode at eight miles an hour. How many hours is it going to take Barry to catch up with Jim? Okay. Let's look at the hard part first. Catch up. What does it mean? Once you catch up with somebody, you'll have each traveled 
what? What's equal? Your what? Distance. Your distance. Once you catch up to somebody, you've traveled the same amount as they have. We don't know how fast you went to get there, but we'll, we'll fill that in. Okay? What are our two things here? Okay, guys, what are, what are my two things that are traveling? Justin, can you give me one? Is it train one, train two? No. Jim? Okay, Justin, can you give me the other one? Barry? Okay, and they're, they're going to catch up to each other. So we said that means they've traveled. What's that mean about their distance, guys? Same distance. Same thing, right? Yeah. So it, it, doesn't give us, it doesn't give us the distance, but we know because they're catching up or they're meeting somewhere, we're gonna, but it's gonna put, D is going to be D. They don't, give us, they don't give us a number or any type of information that we can put in there for D, for distance. That's why I'm just using the variable. Who can tell me something else we know in this table? Something simple. What do, what do we know about Jim? Oh, good. Say it, Norman. I already did say it. Say it miles per hour. What if... Want to go to five? Want to go Who's going five? Jim. Jim. It's a Chevy. So Jim's speed is five. Barry's speed, we, you just said, was how much? Eight. Barry's speed is eight. Now we've got one thing left. Time. Okay. All we know is that Barry left an hour later than Jim. Well, we can't set it because, like, let's say you pick one hour. After one hour, these guys won't meet. How do I know that? After one hour, Jim will be five miles away. After one hour, Barry's going to be eight. So I know they won't meet at one hour. But they might meet later on. They might meet less time. They might meet more time. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, guys, what Mr. Hager is putting in there for time is what? What, he, what he's taking from the problem and what that represents. How, he, how, you have to, how, how do you represent it algebraically? That's what he's doing. So how would we represent Jim's time? We don't know how long he's been traveling, so we could put what? T. T. Now we know Barry left an hour after Jim. So he's, he's been traveling the same amount of time minus one hour. Okay. That's, that's the whole key right there. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah. All right, so we got our distance, we got our speed, I got our time. Anyone think they can tell me the entire equation one? If you think you know, Matt? D equals 5t. D equals 5t. And got, on the top row, they pretty much have the formula, and they still get the equal sign, that's all. Who can tell me equation two? And just remember this one thing you got to be careful of. Dominic? Yep. Eight. Anytime, anytime you've got something that has like a plus one, minus, plus or minus a number, okay, make sure you put that in parentheses. Okay, now what do I do? We're going to set up our equation to solve. How do I do it? What did we do last time? Well, yeah, we're going to plug in what? 5t. 5t. What are we going to plug that in for in the lower equation? D. D. Okay, top equation says D equals 5t. Bottom equation has a D in it. Change D to 5T. Okay? 5T equals One more time, Joe. 5T equals what? T minus 1.
Okay, what's my what's my next step? Katie, what's what's my next step? That's okay. Distribute the eight. Good. Try to get out of it. She got it. Okay, Travis. What happens on the left for now? What stays? What are you bringing down? The five T. Okay, Tyler. What do you get on the right when you distribute that eight? One more. What's eight times T? There you go. Yep. One more time. Negative eight. Okay. I thought you said eighteen minus negative eight. Just eighteen minus eight. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I know what you meant. All right. Two, two steps left. How about Sam? Can you tell me what I do next? Sam. 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 So we decided we got the number on the right that doesn't have a T. We got to put all the things with T's on the left. How do we do that? What's the sign of 8T? Okay, how do you undo that? Negative 8T, where else? On the other side. Okay, Savon, what do I get on the left? Um, you have 3T. Right? Ne no, negative 3T. Yeah, careful, that negative will it'll mess us up. But you got it. Okay, and my last step. Divide by what? Negative 3. So T is 8 divided by 3. Okay, if you get something that doesn't divide nicely, round it to two decimal places. 2.67 hours. Okay, 2.67. Okay, now let's go back up and just read the question. Did it say how long is Barry going to be riding for before they catch up? Or how long has Jim been riding for? Because it's an hour, it's an hour different. And how many hours will Barry catch up with Jim? So all we want to know is how long is it going to take Barry to catch up with Jim? Okay. How long was Jim been riding for? What was T? Um, Two something? Matt, you got it written down? Yeah. How long is, what was Jim's time? 2.67. Okay. So Jim's time was 2.67. How long does it take Barry to catch up? Yeah? 1.67. Now, if you got this far and you accidentally wrote 2.67, I'd probably take off one point because you just about had it. You just forgot you gave me the wrong person's time. Okay. Yep. So Jim has been riding for 2.67. Barry's been riding one less hour. And that's what they wanted to know. How long does it take Barry to catch up? Okay. 1.67. Any questions on that one? Okay, so those two were kind of the same type. All right, so when you see that on the test, when you see a problem, two people traveling, and they're going to catch up, that's, that's the setup. Okay, that's the basic setup. Okay, so I think we're half, halfway there. This one. All right, so this one is a little different setup. It says we have a carry a pigeon that's flying against the wind one way, with the wind the other way. Okay, let's make sure people understand that. If you're flying with the wind, does that make you go faster or slower? Faster. Faster, good. If you fly against the wind, what does that mean? Slower. You're gonna go slower, all right? Not as many knots. So, it says a carrier pigeon, let's see, flew against the wind for one hour to deliver a message. This is a little different. We know the time. We've never known the time before, but this time we do. Okay. Now the pigeon made the return wind trip 
in the same wind in 45 minutes. On the return trip, the pigeon was traveling with the wind, so it sped it up a little bit. Okay, the trip was six miles each way. Find, they want two things. One, how fast is the pigeon flying? And two, how fast is the wind? Okay, so we've got to find two things. First thing I don't like is this 45 minutes. What, what don't you think I like about that? Yeah, everything we've been doing is in hours, so let's, let's stick with hours. The first number, it's already hours, leave it alone. Okay. Does anyone know how you change minutes to hours? You do something with a 60. You know what it is? You divide it. Divide by 60. Hey guys, there'll be one, guys, there'll be one on the homework that talks about current. They're doing it in the homework, guys, that talks about current. Current and wind are the same thing, right? If you go in against the current, it's going to slow you down. On if you're like, like a white water rafting, whatever. If you go in against it, it's going to against it's going to slow you down. Wind, it's going to make you go faster. Same kind of thing as wind. Did you get that, Tyler? Yeah. What did I just say? Some of them. Because <laughs> I'll say that for some of you guys on the homework, right? On the homework, there's going to be a question that talks about the rate. It's going to be talk. It's going to talk about like your rafting, right? If you're rafting, if you're going against the wind, it's going to slow you down. Like uh, against the current, it's going to slow you down. With the current, it's going to speed you up. Same kind of thing, right? So wind, current, same thing. Okay. And I picked the current one because I was last summer I was out kayaking. And I said, what, what can I do for, I a, for a math word problem about me kayaking? It's so, I hate going against the current. Yeah, against the current, right? You fight against it, slows you down. Think, well, think of that. All right, so uh, let's, change, let's change this 45 minutes to hours, OK? How do you change minutes to hours? What do you do? How do we change minutes to hours? Divide by 60. Divide by 60. Oh. 0.75. Okay? 0.75. Okay, so on your on your sheet, cross out 45 minutes. We just change it to hours. 0 0.75. All right, now here you don't have two things traveling. Okay, like Mr. Roy said earlier, you know, we had to train one, train two, person one, person two. This is the same thing traveling. Okay. Tell you, how many things do you have traveling here? You just need the answer. One thing. One thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent it as pigeon traveling with wind, pigeon traveling against wind. So positive one and negative one? We are going to have a positive and a negative in there, yeah? Oh. But you could just write the words. You could write with wind, yeah. against wind. Save yourself some writing. <laughs> we know it's the pigeon. If you read the problem, this is about the pigeon. Okay? So with wind, <laughs> against wind. <laughs> Okay, what, let's think about the distance, okay? The pigeon is making a trip from point A to point B, and then from point B back to point A. So how do the distances compare on those two trips? They'll be the same. They're going to be the same. Very good. That's important to recognize. If you don't recognize that those distances are the same, we're, we're stuck. Okay. Does everyone see why the distance is the same? Pigeons flying to point A, point B, they're going to fly back. Same distance. Um, you should fill in the distance. It's six miles each way. Oh, do we know? Do they tell us that? Yeah. Yeah, if they tell us, why don't we fill it in? Let's make it six. Must be missing something. Oh, my gosh. 
Okay. Yep, the distance is six miles each way. We know that. If you haven't used a piece of information in the problem, then chances are you're going to get stuck. So we would have gotten stuck if we didn't do that. Okay, next thing is let's fill in the time. Hold off on the rate. What's the time when the pigeon travels with the wind? How long does it take the pigeon? What hour? 0.75. Right. Uh -oh. Re return trip with the wind is 0.75 hours. How about when the pigeon was going against the wind? How long did it take? Uh, it Slowed it down a little bit. Okay, it took an hour. Could you have changed it? Instead of going to 0.75 an hour, could have just gone to 60 minutes? Yep, you could have changed it either way. You could have changed it one hour to six. You know, I, yep. I did like this. Yeah, I did it. Now I need my rate with the wind. Okay, how fast is the um, how fast is the pigeon flying? Do we know? I think that's the very the same speed as the pigeon. Find the speed. Find the rate of the pigeon. Okay, we don't know the rate. So how could we represent it, Marcus? R. R. Now, Savon said something about a plus minus earlier. Okay, what's the, um, what happens to your speed when you're traveling with the wind? Speeds up. So would that add to your speed or subtract from it? Add. Add. What are we going to add? The speed of the wind. That's the wrong one. That's with the, that's with the wind. That's it. When you travel with the wind, you speed up. Okay. Now, against the wind. The pigeon is still going to fly at the same, same speed. Not taking into account the wind. Okay. It's flying at the same speed. It's got to stop. Like what you're saying, Isaiah, it's going to get slowed down. It's how fast it's flying. That amount of energy it's using is going to be the same. Yeah. Now, Against the wind slows us down. What operation do we use to make a number smaller? Minus, minus, w. minus w. There's there's our equation. Okay. Now I'm going to need you guys to stay with me because we're going to have to rearrange this a little bit. Guys, we, you know what I said? There's no there's no there's no w there. Right, there's no, in the actual, on the top, right, all the labels we have, up, D, R, T, there's no W. When you get working against the wind, working against the current, you're going to have to plug that in. All right, Tyler, are you listening to me? You're going to have to, because I know as soon as you get, like, I don't know. All right? I need you to pay attention. All right, because you're not paying attention right now. Okay. Now. What, what is equation one? What's my distance for equation one? Six equals. Six equals. Okay. What's my rate for equation one? Uh, yep. And what do you want to do whenever you have plus or minus something? Put it in parentheses. So we parentheses R plus W parentheses point seven five. Point seven five goes on the outside. Okay? Now we might have to distribute. We'll worry about that in a second. Okay, what's my second equation? So we get R minus W. Now we just have a 1. When you distribute a 1, does that change anything? No. All right, so distributing a 1, is it going to change anything? Just going to stay 6 equals r minus w. OK, what can we do in that top equation? Uh, nothing. Something. We have to do something. Distribute. We have to distribute. Now, eventually, we've got to take one of these equations, solve them for r or w, and plug it into the other one. Which equation looks easier? Be better numbers here. Yeah, the bottom equation. Let's take the bottom equation, okay. rewrite it right here. Oh. 
Now, normally I would say it's going to make a difference whether you solve for R or W. But look at the question. They want both. They want the rate and they want the wind. So let's solve for R here. How could you get, how could you get R by itself here? Adding W to each side. So what is R equal? What's on the left-hand side? Are we multiplying or are we adding? Adding. Six plus W. Okay, that's equal to R. Now, look back up at equation one. Do you have an R? Anywhere in that equation? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to take what R is equal to. What's R equal to? Six plus w. It's equal to 6 plus W. And everywhere you see an R, change it to 6 plus W. Okay. What this is going to do is give us an equation with all W. And in a minute, hopefully, if we did everything right, we're going to know the wind speed. Once we know the wind speed, now all we have to do is add 6 to it, and we get the speed of the pigeon. But we've got to find the wind speed first. So 6 equals, what am I changing R to? 6 plus W. Good. 6 plus W. Oh, I what else is inside the parentheses? W. Another plus W. R is 6 plus W. Plus, w. plus another W. What's on the outside? Okay, order of operations. Start inside the parentheses. What's W plus W? 2W. 2W. Okay, next, next step. What do we have to do with that 0.75 now? Yep, Sivan? Good. Usually when we distribute, we put the number in front. This time it was to the right of it, behind. That's okay. Does it matter if we're, if we're just removed from it? Nope. Same thing. So we're going to do 6 times 0.75. Okay, get 4.5 plus 2 times 0.75. Okay, 1.5. What letter should be on the end of 1.5? W. Good, Brian. Two steps left. What's my what's my next step? Uh, minus four point five on both sides. Yep. Everybody here, Marcus. We're gonna minus four point five from both sides. Six take away four and a half is how much? What does that leave you with? One and a half. One and a half. Last step to get W by itself. And you divide. Divide by? 1.5%. Take something and divide by itself. What do you get? You get 1. 1. So the speed of the wind is 1 mile an hour. Thank you. You can back down. Now they want to know the rate. How do we get the rate? Do we have a formula where, where are you going to plug it in for W? Good. Where do you plug in the 1? Do you have an equation that has R by itself already? Yep. Yeah. Why didn't we just fill in W to begin with to find R? We didn't know it. Okay, we didn't know it at first. Now we know it. Fill it in. What's the speed of the pigeon? What's the pigeon's rate? Seven. All right, so if the pigeon didn't have any wind at all, it would be seven miles an hour. Okay? So I'm saying, what did this solve for? Was it the rate for what? Was it the wind? The rate of the pigeon in still air. Okay. Okay. And say you might get you might give one maybe where you don't know the maybe you don't know the distance. 
So you just put the P, right? Yeah, there's other variations, sure. Yep. Okay. Any any question on that last one? That's that's the trickiest type. The whole thing, how did you get seven? Six Seven? Once we get wind speed equal to one. Yeah. Fill in wind speed is one. One oh. plus six. There's your step. Hey guys. Hey guys, like Mr. Hager just said, that's as challenging as it as it gets. On the home run tonight, on the test tomorrow, when we give you a problem like that, we're gonna give you the rate. We're gonna give you the we're gonna give you the rate of the like the one like the one the home run talks about, like the current. We're gonna give you the rate of the current. This one we didn't we didn't know the rate. We didn't know how fast the vision was flying. We didn't know. Alright? So that's, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Now but yeah. tonight, tomorrow, you're gonna get the rate. We'll give it to you. Now, as Mr. Roy just said, if we give you the rate, we're gonna take away something else. Yeah. Okay? So if we give you the speed of say a boat, we're gonna take away the distance. Okay? So you kind of just have to understand how to how to set it up. Okay, let's look at our let's look at our last one. Okay, last one. Last example, guys. Because I need you guys to stay with me, last one, and then you can we'll start some homework. Okay. What are what are the two things? Gene and Bob. Traveling here. Yep. This time it's it's Gene and Bob. It's not it's not the same person or bird making a return trip. Two different people. Hey, hey Bob. <laughs> Gene and Bob. Not Gene Bob. Okay, so Gene. Okay, guys. Gene. Say on, you all set? Okay, it says Gene and Bob started from the same spot. Gene's okay. riding at 12 miles an hour. Okay, where could I put that? On the rate. Rate for who? Um, for Gene. Gene. It says Bob's riding at 10 miles an hour. Okay, put that for Bob's rate. Now, chances are these are all numbers. Everything else here is going to have. Some variables. Oh wait, it does give us this piece. Okay. Next part says when will they be ten miles apart? So they they only give you one um thing, literally. Okay. When they're ten miles apart, who's gonna be in front? G. Well whoever's ahead. Who's always going to be ahead? Gene. Gene's always going to be ahead because they're going faster. Okay. Bob is never going to. This isn't a catch-up problem. So, since this isn't, if this isn't a catching-up problem, okay, their distances are never going to be the same. They're just going to get farther and farther apart because somebody's always going slower. Okay. So who's going to be in front the whole ride? We just said that. Gene. Okay, how could you represent how far Gene has traveled? Ten. Ten. It's got to be a variable. Well, D. Ten miles. D. 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 Now, how far behind is Bob? <laughs> so how would you write Bob being ten miles behind Gene? Uh, minus, uh, J minus ten. Same, stick with the same letter. Oh, D minus 10. Good. D minus 10. Okay, this represents them being 10 miles apart. So if Gene is at 25 miles, Bob would be at 15. Okay, something like that. What about T in this case? Uh, wait, what, what about T? There is T. There is no T. T is our variable, and it's going to be the same in both. Okay? The reason is because they're both starting at the same time. Is one person starting later than the other? Same spot, same direction. Okay? They're starting, same spot, I should even put in there, starting at the same time. So if, 
If Gene rides for six hours, Bob rides for six hours. They're both, drive, they're both riding for the same time. One's going faster than the other. So how should we represent time? T. T. And T. Okay, what's my row one equation? D, D equals 12T. Row one. Okay, what about row two? D minus 10. Yep. D equals 10T. Good. Okay. Is the top equation already solved for a letter? Yeah. Yep, which letter? D. Which letter is by itself? D. D. D is equal to 12t. So, Mr. Hague, when you have when you have something like this, are you always gonna subtract <coughs> from the um, thing that's going slower? That's how I would say that. Yes. They're miles apart. Yeah. You always gonna subtract from the thing that's going slower. Yep, I would do it that way. Subtract how far apart they are, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's not the only way to set it up, but I think slower people think subtract. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so D is 12t. Do we have a D in the bottom equation anywhere? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yep. What are we going to change that D to? 12t. 12t. Okay, this one's not going to be that bad. Okay, Sam, what did we just say we're going to change D to? 12t. All right, so now we've got 12t minus 10 equals, what's on the other side? Travis, what's on the other side? Uh, the other side would be 10t. 10t. Okay, two steps. Okay. Two steps left. Okay. Would you minus 12t on the other side? Yep, I would minus 12t on both sides. What's what's twelve t minus twelve t? Cancels. Cancels. What do you have on the left hand side now? What's ten take away twelve? Negative two. Negative two t. Now we're hoping, okay, if you look ahead a little bit, that these negatives cancel out. If they don't, we're going to end up with negative time, and that that's not good. If you end up with negative time, negative distance, or negative speed, something's wrong. Check, check your arithmetic. Okay, what's my last step? Divide by? Divide by what? Negative two. What's a negative divided by a negative? Positive five. Positive five hours. Okay, so after? How many hours will they be 10 miles apart? Five hours. Okay, now th think about that. Just kind of use common sense. Gene and Bob. Okay. After, after one mile, okay, if Gene's gone 12 and Bob's uh, one hour, Gene's gone 12 and Bob's gone 10, how far apart would they be? Wait, they'd be two miles apart. Okay. After one hour, Gene has gone 12, Bob's gone 10. They're two miles apart. How about after, how about after two hours? How far has Gene gone? How far, Dominic? How far? 24. How far has Bob gone after two hours? 20. What's, what's happening to how far apart they are? It's getting bigger and bigger. Until finally, when you get down to the fifth hour, there's going to be a difference of 10 between them. Okay, so I'm trying to give you guys a hint, a suggestion, if you get stuck on the test of how to at least get the answer and get some credit, even if you get stuck and you couldn't get the equations. Just using common sense and making a table like that. This isn't always practical. But in this problem, you could do it. All right, so the homework uh, tonight is going to be a study guide.
for the test tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow it's only four questions, so you're not going to have the same amount of time. You're going to have from like 2 to 2.40. 40 minutes to do four questions. Well, that, well, okay.